ever been on a farm, there's a lot of stuff. Old machinery, paddock bombs, rusted tanks, coils of wire, corrugated tin, fence posts, bits of pipe. And have you ever seen a farmer sit still? If he's not ploughing the field, fixing the fence, feeding the sheep, scratching his head or having a beer, he's in the shed tinkering with that stuff. He's knocking something up. He's got the oxy torch out and he's blazing up a creation. And you know what? It gets him through the tough times. That creative spirit and the tourism it generates has boosted visitor numbers to rural towns right across the country. Here in the central west of New South Wales, the Animals on Bikes Sculpt Trail runs over 120 kilometres from Dubbo Zoo through to the little town of Molon. This road is the Banjo Patterson Way, named after the great Australian poet Banjo Patterson, who wrote the poem Malga Bill's Bicycle. And Malga Bill was based on a character that Banjo knew, a guy called Bill Henry Lewis, who had to buy a bicycle after the great drought of the late 1800s wiped out all the feed for his horse. There are over 100 sculptures in total, many of them created by the farmers themselves. And you, you had all this stuff lying around the farm, did you? This was in the back of the workshop, and it was an old uh, sickle mower. And it's been, my grandfather probably used it. I don't, never saw it work. And uh, these were bits and pieces we found around the workshop. And uh, we um, had the Cumnock Show coming up and uh, we decided to make the theme of the Cumnock Show. As well as keeping country folk united during the tough times, it has proved a boom for tourism. And it's not only the farmers that made these, it was the, the, you know, the fencing and dipping contractors, the school kids, the backpackers that were here. They all got involved and made these. It's, it's, it's been fantastic for these little shops, these little towns. Uh, we started off with the trike. We wanted, to, we wanted to build a trike and then we had to figure out what animals we wanted to put on it. And we came, I came up with the idea of the, the road runner and the coyote. And then, um, yeah, that was we just built it from there. And there's a competition. Yeah, there's a competition. Yeah. And so, how'd you go in the competition? We won the comedy one, the funny. There was a one for the funniest sculpture. And the ideas are only limited by the imagination. And who came up with the idea of the cow jumps over the moon? It was one of our favourite nursery rhymes, and it was lots of fun. Right. And where did all this? the stuff come from? The ladder in the um, cow came from a um, farmer who had it left over and yeah and then the tail is a tug of war rope. Right. Further south in Bathurst a collective of local artists developed the Arts Trail Open Weekend opening their galleries to visitors on the first weekend of each month. And when people like myself turn up, is that a distraction? Oh, no, not really. I can chat to people and show them what I'm doing at the same time, right. so that's not too much of a distraction. So now I'm ready to make a shape in this piece. Which you do by what? Pressure? Pressure on the inside and controlling it on the outside. This might be a jug, I think. I'll make this into a jug. So now I'll make, a, make the rim. Just pulling it up with my fingers, thumb and forefinger. Gallery 121 is the working home of local ceramicist Mayo. She says the Arts Trail initiative has boosted the spirits of local artists as well as helping sales, especially during the tough times. Artists have long been inspired by the unique Australian light. The glow off a scorched plain, the shimmer of the bush. They'll draw on the colour, the heat, the landscape, both figuratively and literally. If there's a silo, they'll paint it. If there's a rock, they'll grind it. If there's a stump, they'll shape it. This land of ours is a muse. Even when it's barren and desperate and it dries up, all hope it still offers inspiration, distraction and attraction. Oh, <laughs>